okay so welcome you all in the second talk of the morning session and this is the last talk of the lecture series by professor behar sindelman so professor go ahead merci thank you uh, here we are we have to finish this morning so uh, the last step uh, yesterday was the propagation uh, of singularities the theorem of ormondor 71 it, the result was known uh, some years before but uh, that was written uh, at 71 and uh, that says to you if if u is a solution of uh, differential or differential operator so the way front of u is uh, carried by uh, the by characteristic of uh, the operator. The wave front is a union of null by characteristic because uh, outside the characteristic set, uh, the solution is, uh, is smooth. And we will work from far from any boundary in the free space. In, in this course, we will not consider the case of uh, boundaries. Also, uh, what is uh, what is uh, what is true for the uh, C infinity wave front uh, works for the Sobolev wave front. So we will we will consider we will prove this case by characteristic curve of of P is contained of the Sobolev wave front S H S of U or doesn't intersect this set. And the proof is based on microlocal uh, ordinary differential equation. The picture would be of help. So we work in T star around minus zero. We take Two point omega zero omega one p is to the differential operator or think to differential operator u is a solution of something which is smooth say I, I will say zero I will assume that omega zero omega zero uh, of course something like this is <coughs> not in uh, in wave front s of u recall please that the, the solar wave front of u is the set of omega that microlocally near this point are in HS. So you, you, you cut your, you localize your distribution near X0, and you localize U hat, the Fourier transform, in a conical set, conical neighborhood of X0, and this Fourier transform have the behavior of the Fourier transform of the function that is in HS. That is the wave front, uh, Sobolev wave front S of U. So the goal is to prove that if you assume that omega zero is not in the wave front S of U, and if omega one is in the null by characteristic issued from omega zero, this is. Bicaratic, bicaratic curve of P that is included in the characteristic set. Because outside the characteristic set, you are sure by microlocal elliptic regularity, you are sure that U is smooth. So gamma is a null by characteristic of P. 
gamma zero is not in wave front set uh, S of U, uh, then, then, Omega one is not in this set. If U is smooth here, so it is smooth uh, here. Or, of course, it goes in the two senses. So this is an equivalence. Uh, we can assume that P is of other one. Because uh, if P is of order 2, 3, M, or uh, any area number, you divide by an elliptic operator of order my M minus 1. If P is of order M, say PM, you can uh, multiply by something like Like this, micro locally. You say so. This operator is of order one, and this change nothing. The bicyclic curves are the same, and the smoothness will be the same. At the end, you will recover the desired smoothness. So we can assume that P is of order one. Uh, and we have this lemma. You take omega zero. W zero is a micro local uh, neighborhood of omega zero. That means it's a local neighborhood of x zero and a conical neighborhood of C zero. Also, so the lemma says you take A0 in uh, for any symbol. So P is of order 1. For any symbol of order 0, you can find a small neighborhood, micro local neighborhood of omega 0. And my local neighborhood W1 of omega 1, such that for every symbol of order S, CS, supported in W1, this is the target. There exists, you can find the solution. Q2S, a symbol of order 2S, the differential symbol of, in the class S2S, supported near gamma here is the support of Q2S. That satisfies this differential equation. Please convince yourself that this is differential equation because P1 is of order 1. HP1 is a vector field. It's a vector field. You derive Q2S along the vector field HP1 plus a potential. It's read it as a function, multiply it. Q to, to S, and this is the uh, uh, handout uh, term. And this is the rest. The particularity is that for every CS you can find such a solution, modulo a rest that is supported here. This is a symbol of order 2S. It is supported here. Okay. 
in this, in this uh, identity, let us calculate the, the orders. Just compute the orders. Q to S, the solution, is of order 2S. P1 is of order 1. So this symbol is of order 2S minus 1. 2S minus 1, 2S here, 2s here, in the square, and 2s here. Okay. Assume we can do this. The problem, we can solve this equation, of course. Uh, it's an elementary equation, uh, uh, ordinary differential equation. You can solve it, but the, the goal is to, to, to obtain solution that is a symbol. You know, the symbol is satisfied the derivatives, uh, bounds, and so on. Uh, for instance, if you take P equal to P1 equal to half a wave, Half a wave, that is, uh, I will say, like this, forget about the I, no problem. So, transport. You are sure that, so this vector field is not, is not singular. You can solve, you can start from omega zero. If the case for the wave, You are sure that dp, dp is equal to, and this is, this doesn't vanish on the characteristic set, which is the important subset of T star around on which we work. This, this, this never vanishes on two is different from zero on which is given by, because if two is equal to zero, everything is zero, and you leave T star around minus, minus zero. Okay, so the important thing here is that we can choose any symbol CS supported in uh, W1, we will be able to solve and uh, we will have the, this identity with a rest which is of order 2s, too large, it's a bad order, but it is supported here. Okay, so we, we apply this to the equation PU equal, we will apply to the equation PU equal to zero or to some F, which is smooth. P equal to P1. It is of order one. So, you take your distribution, you may assume that U is of uh, compact support. There is no problem. Everything, the, the, the problem is local. So, uh, you, you, you compute this color product. P star Q to S minus Q to S P U U, which is equal to Q to S P U minus P U Q to S star. This is bounded. Because PU, you, you may assume smooth or zero is the same, the same price. So this is bounded. Also for this. Now, this P star, you write it as P star minus P plus P. P star.
So I is equal to P Q to S minus Q to S P plus the difference. P star minus P, uh, this is uh, the somebody calculus. We saw, uh, I think, uh, two days ago. P star, the, the, the principal symbol of, uh, of P is a, A1 bar plus, okay, so the difference is of order zero, and this one is of order ma, uh, minus one. So I is equal to this term, A0, and I put A minus one with the rest. Okay, now, this uh, uh, so differential operator is of order 2s minus 1. Here you have 2s minus 1. Here you have 2s. And here it is exactly, the symbol here is exactly, a, the principal symbol is hp applied to q2s. This bracket is exactly is exactly up of HP. Plus two S to the measure operator of order two S minus one. You lose one degree, you gain one degree. And you use you use the differential equation. Because here I use, of course, the symbol Q to S, which is a solution of the differential equation. So, this operator plus this operator, Q to S, is exactly, is exactly, this is C S. plus A0 uh, sorry plus R to S C S square C S square is equal to C S say uh, uh, plus something which is in, uh, say, M to S minus 1. Okay, now you read. So we know that I is bounded. Also, you recall that R to S has a symbol that is contained, supported in omega zero. So, if you assume that omega zero is not Wave front S of U. That means that C S U in L2 is bounded. This is the uh, starting regularity. We assume that 
this point is not in the wavefront S of U. So this first integral, this norm is finite. Uh, sorry, uh, no, no, that's what we are looking for, no. This term is bounded, this one is bounded because R to S is supported here. And omega zero is not in the way front S of U. So this scalar product is finite. Because of the regularity of U near omega zero. This term is bounded. This one is bounded. You see the starting regularity. Now, if you assume that U, if you assume that U, so the, 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 the assumption R omega zero is not in way from S of U. If in addition we assume that U is in HS minus a half near gamma here. So this term will be bounded because this operator is of order 2s minus 1. So this is bounded by this is bounded by the norm of u in HS minus half. So if you assume that u is bounded in H s minus a half here, you obtain that this term is bounded. That is, u is in H s microlocally near omega one. So you have you have wind half derivative. And you repeat. You gain half by half. You start with H S here, you will be H S plus a half. And again, again, again. So you have all uh, the regularity you need. Uh, I have changed this uh, first application. Now, we, we know how uh, uh, propagate the, the uh, regularity of distribution solution to uh, differential operator, opposite differential operator. The first application, uh, of course, is very easy. We know how, how does it work to the, uh, to the uh, observation of waves. Recall the problem. We have a wave. You can forget about the boundary. There is no problem. You take a solution that is in L2 and satisfying DTU is in L2 of the observation cylinder. Under GCC, GCC, I uh, recall that says you that every by characteristic curve issued from omega at t equal to zero, tra traveling with uh, speed one, enters in omega before the time t. So enters in this cylinder. So if you take DTU here, that means that over omega, DTU is in L2. This is a differential equation. This is a 
differential operator. So by the characteristic set of dt is two equal to zero. So outside this set, you know that u is h1. Sure. But outside this set, you have uh, many things. You have all the characteristic set of the waves. But you know also that box u is equal to zero. So u is h1 also outside the characteristic set of the box. And these two characteristic set doesn't, don't intersect. They intersect exactly on the new section. So the intersection is empty. So we are sure that over omega, your solution is H1. That's sure. And now, over you are H1 here, by GCC, you know that Every bicarbonate curve will enter in this set before the time t. So there, uh, it will take the H1 regularity and come everywhere on omega. So the solution will be H1. You start with an L2 solution, and by uh, propagation, you get the H1 solution. You see? You obtain that you obtain that you just by microlocal elliptic regularity u is h1 lock in this in the small cylinder. Now you know that every by characteristic starting from this small uh, subset of uh, t uh, times uh, omega, every by characteristic would enter in, in this zone. There, the solution is H1. So this point is not in the H1 wave front of you. So, so all this region is out of the H1 wave front of you by regularity, by uh, propagation of the regularity. Uh, I, I, I will go to. This is alt later, so my car. Just some minutes. That concerns uh, the first, the first slides we have uh, so in the first day. Voilà. If you uh, remember well, uh, our problem was to to. Uh, we said that the goal is uh, not only to 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 establish this uh, observability estimate. If you are not able to do it directly, you can uh, prove relaxed estimate, internal or a boundary uh, observability estimate. And if you have this estimate, for instance, to obtain the right one, the strong one, you need some unique continuation result. Okay. I will come back to this point. I want to prove this estimate starting from this one. Recall, this estimate was proved by propagation regularity tools, ecological analysis. So does relaxed observability 
imply observability. For this, we study the set of invisible solutions. So, solution of the box uh, and zero t times omega. That other solution for which the right hand number is zero. If you, if you want to prove this estimate, necessarily this quantity is known on H1, L2, on the energy space, necessarily. Because it's bounded by the energy, energy uh, hyperbolic energy estimate, it's bounded. This, this converse estimate, inequality, is uh, for free. So, to obtain this estimate is equivalent to prove that this quantity is a norm. Okay. So you, you study the, 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 the set of invisible solution. It's clear that N a priori is a subset of L2 H minus 1. By propagation, you know that N is you just proved that this solution are in H1 because DTU equal to is equal to, to zero. So you know that U is H1 on the sub set zero T times uh, omega, small omega. Of course, also, since this map is bounded on H1, L2, so N is closed in H1, L2. A subset of L2, H minus 1. That is closed in H1, L2, necessarily is of finite dimension because of the compact embedding of H1, L2 in L2, H minus 1. So, dimension of N is finite. Also, you can see that DT acts on N because the Laplacian I don't see it here. The doesn't see DT. They commute. So DT acts is linear on a finite dimension space. So it has uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors, vectors. And if you if you if you if you look on the eigenvectors. So uh, there is some, some U, some V, let's say, that satisfy dt V. You plug it in the equation, and you have minus Laplacian plus omega 2 V equal to 0. And of course, V is a solution. V is, so dt V equal to 0. So you have V equal to 0 over omega. This is not, this is not. You can solve this, you can solve this, uh, this equation. It's uh, exponential t lambda v0 of x. And of course you get clack, clack. And you, 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 you just uh, have the unique continuation for the, for the classical Laplacian. Uh, you lose uh, the T uh, 
component. There is no T, no. Uh, everything depends only on the space variable. The, the set of invisible solution is reduced to zero. Very easy, very easy. Okay, now a um, little bit more involved application. Uh, ta, 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 ta. Il faut revenir. Next application, bon, five minutes, okay. This one. Donc, since uh, the first day we are talking about uh, geometric control condition of Bardos Le Beau Rauch, Rauch Taylor, uh, the celebrate uh, geometric control condition uh, in their, uh, in their uh, article in uh, 1992, Bardos Le Beau and Rauch uh, proved that this condition is sufficient and they established uh, observability estimate for the waves from the boundary or from internal uh, subset in each HS, in each subwave space, not in H1, L2. In each HS, they had uh, an estimate. So the, the, the constants depend on S. A priori, if you look carefully, <coughs> Their, uh, their uh, control operator depends on S. Okay. Uh, here we will work on uh, the mining manifold without boundary. We have no problem with propagation uh, up to the boundary. Uh, and for this, I have problems with, with uh, zero as eigenvalue of the Laplacian. Laplace beta me in, in this case. So uh, I will add, I will add uh, u or any constant m, strictly positive u. So uh, we will deal with the Clay Gordon equation. You take a, a subset of m and you assume that you have a GCC. Okay, everything is in place now. We can work. We will prove, we will see together that if GCC is not, voila, is not satisfied, we cannot observe. It doesn't work. GCC is not satisfied. That means that there is, uh, there is a, a bicarthesic curve, in particular a geodesic, this means that I think it, I should, voila, it's written. There exists a geodesic for a geodesic on, on a manifold. Uh, you don't consider the point, you, you consider the point and the direction with which you start. Okay, so take a point of the tangent bundle to M, and uh, there is a geodesic starting at this point. That satisfies gamma M0 of S for S in 0 T doesn't see omega. No GCC. You can, you can easily see that for, with this V0, you can design a C0. It's, it's, that is a, 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 an element in the cotangent bundle such that the geodesic, the bicardesic curve issued from this point, the same, t equal to zero, the same point, x zero, two zero equal to c zero in x zero. Uh, I, I, I set x zero uh, as index because you have a metric. So this, this, this norm is uh, given by the metric. And Actually, the comedic. And uh, this point satisfies the bicarthesic issued from rho zero tilde doesn't intersect 
the cotangent bundle over small omega. This is the hypothesis. Okay, this is there is a mechanistic curve that doesn't see omega between zero and capital T. Okay, so here is a sketch. Here is the idea of the proof. You consider this uh, family of function. Uh, we work in local coordinates. We are, we are on manifold. So in local coordinate, you can uh, forget about the manifold and think uh, uh, in Aran. So uh, you consider this family of function, Gaussian, uh, something which oscillates very quickly. And you can see that uh, this V0 epsilon of x uh, has h1 norm, which is 1, 1 plus something o, o of epsilon, small o of epsilon, so, okay, 1. And, and this is the, the important thing. If you take a pseudo differential symbol, a pseudo differential symbol of x and c, so on the basis in x, of order zero, such that x0, x0 is not in the support of B. So x0, x0 is here. B is supported somewhere here. And if, if you apply this differential symbol to V0, epsilon, you are, you take the, the HS norm for every S, for every S, you are almost there. You don't see. I mean, this goes to zero. More fast than any power of, I, I, I should say, epsilon power k, any power of epsilon, it's zero. Okay, so we have this family of, of function, and we have this result. If you take this point, Assume that this point satisfies rho is not, uh, is different from rho zero. This, this point, see? Such that the judic issued, the, the bicatastic issued from rho zero delta doesn't, doesn't intersect the small cylinder. So if rho is a point that is different from uh, zero tilt, you are sure that the wave front of u epsilon uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, uh, doesn't intersect I didn't write it here. We will just find it. It's a solution of the wave equation. With, with which data? You're right. I should reserve a slide, a full slide. For <laughs> look, look at this. We consider the wave equation. A is a metric, so is our box, say. Wave, the claim cordon or wave equation is the same with data v0 epsilon and dtu at, at, at zero is uh, i lambda of g v0 epsilon. Lambda of d is this operator. The symbol is exactly
if uh, you are uh, you are on compact manifold without boundary the same thing is true on a domain with the, the uh, homogeneous directed boundary condition uh, you have for you say in l2 uh, that you write ug g uh, that is the sequence of uh, Hilbert basis of L2 on M or Omega. Uh, if uh, the, the are the sequence of uh, eigenvalues, okay, uh, lambda is given by Not this lambda. You can define. You can define the map you you lose one derivative. It is in the case of a domain with zero boundary condition, it is exactly the square root or minus Laplace. Okay. Here you add the one that defines Klein Gordon. So here you have exactly lambda of D U is exactly uh, the sum of ta -ta -ta -ta. And you start from zero. The surprise, you can define this operator. It, it, it's of order one, it's of order one, it maps H1 uh, uh, to L2, H2 to H1, and so on. Hs to Hs uh, minus one. The, the, the interesting thing is that at not trivial, interesting and not trivial, is that lambda is a pseudo differential operator. Lambda is up up S1 of order one. Uh, yeah, did that. I have two dates. I would say independently because the methods are, are not the same. Chile in 1967 uh, and Chubin in two, two, 201. Uh, in, in, in a book, in very, very, very interesting book. Very nice. Okay, so we have two differential operator, and this means that V0 epsilon is of norm 1 in H1. So DTU lambda D V0 epsilon is in L2. And also, uh, we will see exactly what, what happens with this data. And now, so you have the initial energy. The initial energy is, say, 1. Uh, also, is if you uh, DTU epsilon in L two uh, uh, goes to zero. You can you can you can uh, compute directly. And you have this. Uh, we can prove this because because your uh, wave equation uh, box uh, you can write it as uh, dt uh, ma, uh, plus a lambda.
dt minus a lambda box is this, OK? And uh, uh, of course, Box u equal to zero if you denote v is equal to uh, u, you will find that equal to zero and v of zero equal to zero. You can compute. This is exactly the wave equation. So V is equal to zero, and that I am saying. So we just focus on this one order equation. We just focus on this. And the, 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 the game now is to follow a Baker's curve issued from the small cylinder and follow it backward in time. Look at this. Omega. M. We start is the point x0 with which we, we have constructed our family. The point x0 that violates GCC, from which uh, there is a mechanistic that doesn't enter in uh, the subset 0t times uh, small omega. This point cannot be in omega, of course. So this point is somewhere here with its component in the cotangent space. X0, X0 is a bad point from which starts a bad by characteristic. The characteristic starting from here looks like this. It doesn't enter here. We know this. This is our hypothesis. OK, so now you start from any point over of the cotangent space over omega. You follow it backward in time. You are sure, you are sure that at t equal to 0, we will, we will intersect the data upper plane. You are sure to be in a point that is different from x0, x0, because from one point uh, is uh, issued only one by characteristic curve. You need this. You have smooth coefficients, so you have a flow. So if you start from some point here, you are sure that you will, at t equal to 0, you will be in some other, perhaps this point on the, on the basis, perhaps that x is equal to x0, but x0 would be different from the corresponding t. Sure, because we are solving a differential equation in the cotangent bundle. So you have to, uh, you have to, uh, Think in X and C. Okay. So at T equal to zero, if you follow the, this uh, Bacardi curve backward in time, we'll be in a point that is different. You have, uh, you will arrive in, uh, say, XF. Cf, which is different of x0, x0, 
if Xi F is different from Xi zero, it's very easy because you have two two uh, uh, different uh, microlocal direction. Otherwise, if you have the same, of course, X F will be different from X zero. This is easier. If X F is C F, sorry, is different from this one. It is, of course, uh, in the lemma. Okay, so you are sure that the data here, the data, you see this point, this one. The HS norm of the data is very, very, very small. It's, it's say, equivalent to zero. So, at this point, your solution is in every Sobolev space. And the, the, the problem is that the regularity you have here is a regularity on the x variable, only on the x variable. But since you are solution of a wave equation, since you are hyperbolic, this gives you a regularity in Tx. So this point, t equal to zero, all the details are uh, in the note. It is very precise. Once you have followed this by characteristic backward in time and hit uh, the uh, data surface, you obtain that the point t equal to zero, c, uh, say xf, xf, uh, to some to f and cf, you are sure that it's not in the wave front S of U of zero and uh, uh, ta 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 uh, and U epsilon. Sorry. Voilà. Sure. You, you, you have an idea about the HS norm. Infinitely small. And now, now, you propagate this. No. Voila, voila. I, it's finished here. This. This is not in the HS wave front. So this point is not in the HS wave front. My propagation. Okay. So it is bounded in HS. And you finish exactly like the first day. You go to a contradiction argument, you will have a sequence of solutions that are bounded, uh, uh, weakly convergent to zero in H1 and bounded in Hs for s equal to two, three, four, uh, uh, as you like. So they will converge to zero. Okay. So the chapter of propagation and uh, is uh, uh, now, I think, closed. I will skip uh, all what happens at the boundary. It's, it's really a huge task. Uh, you have something. Uh, these are the worst case. You know, local coordinate, uh, unity, coordinates, so. Melrose-Chosrand theorem is exactly the same, except that you replace the wavefront with a 
wavefront up to the boundary. At the boundary, near the boundary, you have to replace your uh, field differential operator by tangential field differential operators, assuming that the boundary is smooth. And everything goes uh, similarly. Okay. Two words about microlocal defect measures. Remember, the first day we have said uh, uh, we can prove this observability estimates by propagating wavefront or, so regularity, or propagating microlocal defect measure support. I mean, compactness or lack of, of, of compactness in H1 or L2 or This notion was introduced uh, independently. Uh, uh, there is, for the publication, uh, there is some months of difference. Only the referees can say what is of the two papers in the first. <laughs> I don't know. So we'll say in the same, in the same time, let's say the same day. Uh, Actually, the microlocal defect measures uh, is uh, an improvement of the defect measures, which is a, 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 an old notion. When you take a sequence that is bounded in L2, UK square is bounded in L1, okay? And we know in this case that we can subtract, um, uh, we can. Um, extract a subsequence that is converging in the sense of measure. That means that for every phi, you can take you need, you, uh, only continuous uh, with compact support. Uh, for every uh, function test phi, uh, the, this limit exists. So it is linear with respect to phi. And this is the measure, the defect measure uh, uh, associated to, to UK. The idea for microlocal defect measures is to replace the function test phi of x by a pseudo differential symbol of order zero. Why? Uh, just, I, I will go to the examples and I will come back after. This one. You, you take this sequence. P is a smooth compactly supported function in Iran. K beta, P of Kx. The norm is easy. So if beta is smaller than n uh, by 2, you go to 0 strongly. OK. For n uh, beta larger than n by 2, nothing to do. For beta equal, equal, equal exactly to n uh, by 2, this sequence is, c'est pas moi, c'est moi, non, c'est pas moi. Je reconnais pas. So the, the sequence is, is bounded, and you can, if, if you take even a function here, you take a function here, uh, you can see that of course, there is just a of zero, so you you would have phi. You would, you would divide by by phi, for instance, phi of zero. Second example, this one, for instance. Look, you have. Forget about this. Uh, <clears throat> you 
2k clearly weakly converged to zero in L2 because of this oscillating uh, term. But if you, if you consider the defect measures of UK for phi in phi zero zero, if you calculate phi UK, UK in L2, the exponential will, will disappear completely. This is exactly phi, uh, phi, phi, so, phi two. So you see nothing. I mean the, the, the principal responsible of the weak conversions to zero has disappeared. So there is a problem, really. Okay. So as I said, the, the idea is to replace this uh, test function of x by a differential operator of order zero. So the test function will be, from now, test symbols in S0. We take them classic. We take A, classic, I mean, it, it has an, uh, an asymptotic expansion, a0 plus a, uh, a minus 1 plus plus plus. And it's, uh, it's uh, easy to see that uh, this limit, if it exists, doesn't depend on a minus 1. It only depends on a0 because, you see, this operator is of order a minus 1. So it will map L2 in H1. So this. Uh, this product will be, will converge to zero, sure. So this limit is necessarily equal to this one. And uh, okay, there is, there is a job to do. There is a job to, to prove that uh, the microlocal defect measures are well defined. Uh, uh, here we are just uh, working uh, uh, for uh, L2 microlocal defect measures. Uh, we have to use the guarding lemma uh, and uh, so on. Voilà. There exists a positive random measure on the cosphere symbol, uh, the space of X and Xi, Xi, uh, uh, with norm one, such that, and the subsequence, of course, such that this this uh, uh, limit uh, is exactly uh, defines a, a linear form on A. We have to just one word to understand what is the problem to to prove the existence of the well, the well, I, I will say, the, of the, the measures when you when you have a sequence of function weakly converging to zero in L two, for instance, you take uh, to the differential operator of order zero. You calculate U k U k. We know that this sequence is bounded. In C. We know it. So we are sure that this sequence will admit a subsequence that converse. Okay, that exists, that converge there is something depending on A. The problem is to prove that we can find a subsequence that will converge for every A. Attention. The problem is this one. We have to prove that this, you see, this sequence will converge by something depending on A. But 
a priori, I cannot write alpha of a or mu of a. No, it's not a function of a. I must prove that there is a subsequence that works for everybody, every symbol. And that is the problem of construction. It, it relies just on uh, Ascoli, theorem, because the, the space uh, this space of symbol uh, just work on the sphere. Don't forget. Okay. So we have we have microlocal defect measures. Please note that when you have a sequence UK meet the covariant to zero in L two, you can uh, compute uh, its microlocal defect measures. But uh, you are not, uh, you are not sure it's unique. The set of measures attached to UK is not unique a priori. Okay, but if you extract the subsequence, you see in this theorem, we extract there exists a subsequence such that uh, this, this fact take place. If you, uh, I, I mean, you can subtract another sequence, subsequence that works also, and you have another measure. But in practice, you subtract one subsequence, and you work with this measure. If there is only one, uh, we say that the sequence is pure, but in practice we, we assume always, all the day, that the sequence is pure. Tac, tac, tac. Before before finishing this 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 task, a small question. Just to, 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 to show that, okay, it's a very good thing uh, we have put on the table, the defect measures, to detect the lack of compactness or the compactness, but uh, it doesn't solve uh, everything, unfortunately. Look at this. If you, if you take a sequence conversion uh, weekly to zero with L2, and you, you, you assume that uh, this is wrong. Uh, two errors. Here it's M or R. We start with R, so it should be R here. And here it's hat. You assume that the spectre of UK is bounded. You assume that support of UK hat is bounded by R. Okay. So you are sure that, uh, excuse me, no, you take R here, this is right, R. So for all fixed M, for all balls, if you integrate UK uh, hat a square on every ball, this will go to zero. only by dominated convergence theorem. No problem. Because, because actually UK head of C goes to zero for every C. And it is dominant because UK is in L1. Uh, UK head, excuse me. Okay, so That means what? That means that if you have, if you have uh, a sequence that converts weakly to L2, uh, in L2 to zero, the weak conversions, the problems arise in high frequencies. If you stay 
in bounded frequency, nothing happens. You are sure that for bounded frequency, there is strong convergence. The problems arise with C large. And the question now is at which scale? So, uh, just write what we, what we see. Solve the problems, the lack of compactness, if it exists, uh, arises for Xi large. But the lack of compactness can, can arise, I don't know. It depends, of course, it depends on K. So, uh, okay, you, you, you are not compact at a xi like 2 power k, xi like uh, k square, uh, k, I, I don't know. When you do this, when you do this analysis, you are doing semi-classical analysis. That's why a more refined, I will say, a more evolved uh, uh, defect measures is the notion of semi-classical measures. You can find a very, uh, a very good exposition of, if you, if, if you go step by step, uh, start with the uh, uh, lecture given by Nicola Burke in uh, perhaps 20 years ago, no, 15, 10, 15 years ago at uh, uh, Collège de France. Very simple, no, nearly no proofs. But, okay. Well, two minutes to, to, to say that the microlocal defect measures, uh, I will say, enjoy nearly the same properties as the wavefront. They satisfy the microlocal uh, elliptic regularity outside the, uh, the uh, characteristic set, the measures are zero, strong convergence, uh, and they propagate along by characteristic curve, of course, in insuitable framework. You, you, you have to, to make nearly the same, the same assumption. The proof are here. They are also, I think, they are a little bit more detailed uh, in uh, in uh, in the notes. So you, you see, you have the same equation. Mu is here, is is the measure. Of course, please pay attention. This equation has to be read in uh, the sense of distribution because mu is a, a measure distribution of order zero. So you have to, that means, that means that h p m mu equal to zero, that means that h p m mu a of x and c equal to zero for any symbol, and that means exactly that mu Uh, HPM A I think I didn't uh, uh, say it the transpose of uh, Hamiltonian field is minus HPM 
Vamos supor, HPM is binds. You you just uh, Schwartz lemma. So that means this estimate. And you have so the you get th that gives you the second proof with measures of the observability. And the uh, last remark uh, that will uh, that will co cost three minutes. Remember the first day we have we have say if we if we uh, feed a control system with the the uh, the bed control we we use another metric and uh, we uh, give it the bed control uh, this is ah this is here okay you have two metrics a and a prime that can be that can be uh, very very close in a very strong uh, topology if you feed the system with the same control the one of a for instance so uh, at the final time the two solution can differ uh, by a very 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 large constant This is based on a very simple fact. I will finish with uh, uh, this small computation. Very simple remark. This seems to be complicated, but it's exactly this very simple remark here. Look at this. UK is a sequence that converts weekly to zero in L2. Okay. VK also converts weekly to zero in L2. I think you agree with me that's not true. Sure. But if, for instance, you have, you can think in one space or uh, multi-dimension, if uh, VK is solution of, UK is solution of such an equation, VK, I say, uh, uh, minus, to, to get something, to have something very easy to see. UK satisfies this system, VK satisfies this system, you are sure that this work. Without any computation. I, I take this system, perhaps, uh, you, do, you, are, you are very strong, you can calculate and determine exactly the form of UK, exactly the form of VK, and tell me it's, it's clear. No, I can put here, a very complicated equation, so you cannot calculate. The reason is very simple. With this equation, the support of the measure associated to UK is contained in the characteristic set. Two equal minus C. The support of the measure associated to VK is contained in the characteristic set to equal to C. So the two supports, you are sure with this equation that UK converges strongly to zero everywhere except here. The same for UK, VK. So the set where the two sequences doesn't converge uh, strongly is the intersection which is zero the, the, the null section so actually UK and VK each one of the two sequences doesn't see the set where the other converge weakly and not strongly you just write uh, 
make local uh, localization of, you see, 2 equal to xi is here, 2 equal to minus xi is here. So, so you cut, you cut, you, you take something like k of d, here you take something like c of d, and you write u equal to plus and v, say, k of d, v plus 1 minus k of d, v. And when you, when you take the scalar product, you will just see these two ones, because this term converge strongly to zero. This one also, you will just see this one. And these two, so differential operator of zero order, when you, when you take the product, you see, you will, you will have, uh, I say, C of D UK, T of D VK in L2, so it will be K star of D, C of D UK, VK, L2. The symbol of K star is the one of K, say. Take it with value, uh, real values, modulo, lower order terms. We don't, and these two symbols have disjoint support. So this operator is infinitely smoothing. So it will be bounded, for instance, in uh, H2, H3. So it will go, it will converge to zero. UK is, VK is bounded, so we see nothing. Merci. I stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Pelasen, for this nice lecture series. So now I ask the audience if they have a questions, and also in the online participants, if they have a question, they can unmute and ask. Yes, thank you. Um, perhaps I have a, a technical question. Uh, why at the beginning of the talk, um, for proving that GCC is, uh, let's say, necessary, uh, are you considering uh, Klein Gordon instead of Wave? Uh, if you take uh, if you take the wave equation on yes. a compact manifold without boundary, yes, you cannot observe it. You cannot observe it. Yes, sure. You, you know, yeah, Kevin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because the constant is a solution. Ah, yes, yes. yes. C'est mort. Okay, okay. Dead. Okay, yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, but yeah. uh, even, even <laughs> in... Uh, yes, we, we remove, and the, in this case, we have to work in the quotiented space, H1, L2. Yes, but with the uh, gene, we, we had, uh, we have characterized the HVM control operator as a differential operator on this space. You are completely right. On H1 plus, L2 plus, where, uh, we forget about the constant. Sure, th th this is the bad case. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. So on the slide 52, can you go on the slide 52? 50? 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. Fifty-two. Uh, 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 sorry. Tech. Yeah. So here you are taking the family of functions. This v naught epsilon x. Wait. In the here. So what is the motivation behind considering this uh, highly oscillatory with the Gaussian? What is what is the motivation? Yeah. Why we are constructing in this particular way? Uh, it's a picture.
don't forget, we want to, to prove that the initial energy want to prove this, okay? With uh, this uh, family of, uh, of data, assume x0 is here. No bicarbonate curve is shoot from this point into here before t, okay? What, what, what is written in the propagation result, if you, if you uh, see the, the, the theorem, uh, HP1, uh, Q, Q2S, I think, the, the, the differential equation, okay, tells you, in particular, that when you start from some point, the HS norm here, is bounded by a uniform constant, the HS norm here. You see? Okay, so we want to prove this estimate. This energy on the, uh, with this family of data is one. And the propagation uh, uh, propagation theorem tells you that this uh, uh, integral goes to zero. Why? Because this integral, the L2 norm of DTU over this cylinder, takes its value from a point that, from points that are never equal to x0, x0. Any, any bicarbonic issued from this cylinder will be in some point which is not x0, x0. It, it's, it's shaming because I uh, am saying x different of x0, but we are working in the cotogen space in time and space. Please, in time and space. It's not tangential, it's not in space only, but it's completely in details read in the notes. We'll find, we, we, we will have the problem to, uh, uh, I will say, to, uh, uh, we, can, we can call it lifting lemma. We lift the regularity on the boundary on t equal to zero, we have to lift it on the regularity on uh, t and x. This is important, but because we propagate the wavefront set in T and X. Okay, so you you are sure that since the the the, the data are bounded in H S for every S, they are bounded here. You are sure they are bounded here. So you take S equal to two. You are sure propagated this H2. H2 uh, comes from this point. Okay, so your solution U epsilon is bounded in H2, say four. Okay, I get it. It is bounded in H4 here. So DTU epsilon is bounded in H3 of 0t times, sorry, omega. You are sure. This is bounded in H3. Okay. And you know that U epsilon in H1, so dt u epsilon in L2, no, sorry, here, it is, uh, voila, in L2, it goes to zero 
weekly in L2, sure. And it is bounded in H3. So it goes strongly to zero in L2. There is, there is no, no way, no way. You have just to gain regularity, propagation, and compactness, the compact embedding of uh, So, if there is no other questions, so let us thank Professor Vilasin for this excellent lecture series. <laughs>